Hello everyone, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to take a minute and talk a little bit about the new Spellbinders gift sets. I helped put some of these together and I'm very excited to share these because I feel like they make the perfect gift for someone who is new to crafting or maybe has already been crafting for a little bit and is trying to get their feet wet, maybe doing some hot foiling or better pressing or die cutting. I feel like these are just fantastic. You can get a gift set like that for yourself or you can hint at your husband or your partner that there's something that you like and just send them a link to a particular gift set that you would enjoy or maybe get a gift set like this for a crafty friend. So there are eight gift sets to choose from. I uh, am a little proud because I helped put some of these together and I kind of feel like they're a little near and dear to my heart. So the first one is the Essential Crafting Tool Gift Set. And this one includes the Spellbinders apron. So if you don't yet have the apron, I kind of feel like that's a nice little gift set to get. Also, of course, this includes the different paper trimmers the tweezers, the tool in one, two pair of scissors and a corner rounder and a notch tool. So essential tools for your crafting area plus an apron. I love my apron. I actually have two of those aprons and I wear it whenever I'm crafting just because it has pockets, you know, and I can put my phone in a pocket, put some tools in another pocket. So yeah, love this gift set. The next gift set that Spellbinders is offering this year is the Marvelous Machine gift set. So this one is a very beefy set. It includes the white Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine. So the six inch opening machine. It also includes the white Platinum Scout machines. That one's a little smaller. It's the 3.5 machine opening. So it's like a baby die cutting machine. It also includes the Glimmer hot foil system. So if you don't yet have a hot foiling system, this is the one to look at. And of course, there's a better press system that is included. When you're getting this bundle, you get quite a bit of a discount because you're purchasing all of these machines at once. So if you are looking to get a new die cutting machine and if you don't yet have Glimmer and Better Press, this is a fabulous bundle to check out. Okay, the next one is the basic Better Press gift set. And this one includes a little bit of everything, you know, some basic tools and supplies to help you get started with the Better Press system. So it, of course, includes the Better Press system. We also included Floral Celebration Press Plate and the Stencil Bundle. It's one of my favorite plates and it comes with a stencil, making it very easy to add color to your image. It also includes Cheers to You Sentiment Press Plate because we all need sentiments, of course. There's a pack of ink, the Jet Set Better Press Mini Ink Set that you can use to press your image or even to do some ink blending. And you'll see me do that a little later in this video. And there are two packs of cardstock porcelain and bisque. Those are A2 panels. And then, of course, a set of mini blending brushes because this gift set includes a, pre a press plate with stencils. So we thought it would be nice to include the blending brushes to give you an idea how you can use those to add color to your better pressed images. I personally love this particular set of blending brushes. I have quite a few sets in my stash and I use them very often when I'm ink blending, especially little details on my backgrounds. So this is again a basic better press gift set. And by the way, I have a video tutorial featuring these products and creating a card using them. So stay tuned for that. The next gift set is the Starter Scout gift set. So this one is absolutely adorable because it includes the exclusive Lilac Shimmer Scout die cutting and embossing machine. So again, this is the mini machine. It's the little baby platinum in the lilac shimmer color. This bundle also includes a two-in-one. I love mine and I use it all the time to help me get the little die cuts out of the die and also clean my die from all the negative bits. 
It also includes a silver assorted treasured cardstock pack. There are three packs in general, not in this bundle, but in general, there are three packs. There's the silver, the gold, and I believe a rose gold or something, and they are fantastic. The assortment of cardstock in these packs is just, is fabulous. You know, that's, there's nothing more to wish for as a die cutter because you have all the different finishes, all the different surfaces. You have the glitter, you have the brush, you have, you know, the smooth. So there is a lot of cardstock, specialty cardstock to play with. It's really good paper and I cannot recommend it enough. So next, this bundle includes the four inch detail scissors. I love mine. I use them a lot. And then there is the thank you etched dies and then the hello smile dies because, well, these are sentiments and we can never have too many sentiments in our stash. Okay, the next bundle is the sparkle and shine gift set. And this one is actually very affordable. It's only $30, $29.99. And this one includes an assortment of Spellbinders embellishments. I picked my favorite embellishments, the embellishments that I use most often, and we put them in this bundle. So we have the gold smooth discs, we have the silver smooth discs, aura opalescent sequins, pink opalescent sequins, opal color essential gems, silver mix essential gems, gold mix essential gems, Fashion Oyster Color Essential Pearl Dots, Dimensional Clear Enamel Dots, and Dimensional Black and White Enamel Dots. So this is a fabulous bundle of embellishments, and we are all using embellishments on our cards, of course, all the time, either to cover up a boo-boo or just to dress up our projects. The next gift set is the Glimmering Hot Foil gift set. And I also have a video tutorial featuring a card created using these products. So this particular gift set includes, ta-da, a Glimmer Hot Foil system. There's also the Glimmering Buttercups Glimmer Plate and Stencil Bundle. Again, a beautiful plate with stencils to help you add color to your background. There is the Anemone Glimmer Blooms. It's one of my favorite glimmer plates from a few years ago. It's from my collection. There's also the Curved Everyday Sentiments set. So you have the sentiments and the coordinating dies to cut them out. So you have a, a handful of products to help you get started right away. We also included several packs of foil. So the Glimmer Hot Foil 4 Rolls, the Satin Metallics Variety Pack, and then the Satin Pastels Variety Pack. Both of these are fantastic. We also included the Glimmer Specialty Cardstock, and these are the absolute perfect papers for hot foil stamping because they're very smooth. You know, the foil transfers simply beautifully onto these papers. And finally, this gift set also includes the specialty clear film, which is basically heat resistant acetate that you can use to foil on. And the last gift set is the lovely Lilac Shimmer gift set. So this one includes both of the Lilac Shimmer die cutting machines, the Platinum 6 and the Little Baby Platinum. And I think this is a fabulous gift set to give to somebody who uh, maybe has been crafting and die cutting for a while and is looking to get a new die cutting machine because just let's be honest, that color is just fantastic. Okay, so that was a look at the bundles, the new bundles available at Spellbinders. Now let's go ahead and jump onto the video tutorials. I have two video tutorials that I filmed for the Spellbinders YouTube channel featuring the Better Press gift set and the Glimmer gift set. I hope you enjoy both. Thank you. And let's go ahead and start watching. I'm going to start by using the Floral Celebration press plate and pressing it in black ink on the Spellbinders Better Press porcelain cardstock. So here I have my plate. I've placed it on the magnetic part of my better press system. I'm also going to attach a sheet of the better press cardstock onto the clear plate. I'm using best of a craft tape to create a double sided little sticky. And next I'm using the black better press ink. This is included with your better press system to apply ink onto my plate. 
The best way to apply the better press ink onto your better press plate is by using tapping, tap and turn motion. So you basically tap and turn, tap and twist a little bit to apply ink onto the plate. Make sure you've inked up the entire plate and then place the clear plate with the paper on top. Use your die cutting machine and send it through the Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine to apply pressure and transfer this beautiful design onto the paper. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness, this is just so pretty. Next, we're going to add color to this background using the coordinating stencils. Here, I have already attached the first layer onto the paper. I'm using a grip mat. The grip mat is holding my paper in place and it is also holding my stencil. If you do not have a grip mat or a similar product, you can just use tape and tape your products together. I first started with the taffy ink. This ink is included in the basic better press gift set. It is included in the four pack of inks that you're getting in this gift set. So there's the jet set, better press mini ink set. There's, uh, there are four colors of ink, taffy, garnet, cruise, and thunder. So we have two pinks, a teal and a gray ink. And these are the colors that we will be using to color this background. You can of course use any other colors you want. I wanted to show you the card created using just the products from this gift set. I'm also using blending brushes that are included in this gift set. And these are fantastic because they come in three sizes. You have the large, the medium, and the small, allowing you to add ink even to the smallest areas and have a lot of control over how and where you apply the color onto your paper. I have now switched onto the second stencil and I'm using the same brushes and the same ink colors to color my background. The coloring doesn't take a lot of time. You can do a solid layer of color if you want and color your flowers solid pink, for example, or you can do a little bit of shading like I am doing here and have a little bit of a more saturated color at one side of the flower and then fade that into white on another side of the flower. It's completely up to you how you want to do your ink blending. And again, here I am using the same pinks for all of the flowers but you do have three separate flower layers allowing you to do different colors of ink for example you can do pink yellow and orange or pink purple and peach you know play with the color combinations and be creative there are a lot of examples on the spellbinders website for each of these products. So if you click over to the individual products you can find card ideas for these easily. I'm using the layer number four and here I'm stenciling the leaves using the teal color and it's going to be so pretty. I absolutely love the pink and teal color combination. So again, this color is Cruise. I'm doing the same technique here, adding more color at the base of the leaves and fading the leaves into white. I think that looks very elegant and very pretty. I am speeding up the blending of this background because you certainly don't need to watch me ink blend the same thing over and over again. I'm going to remove this layer and we just have the last layer to ink blend and this one features two types of leaves. So we are going to use two different colors. We're going to go with Thunder for the branch with the little leaves and here I'm using the smallest blending brush. And with that done, I'm going to go back to my teal brush and the cruise ink and ink blend the other shape of leaves with a cruise ink. So this is the beauty of using those smaller blending brushes. You don't have to do any masking. You don't have to fuss around with your stenciling. The brushes are small enough to get into the smallest areas on your background. With the ink blending done, it's time to reveal our background. Oh, and this looks so beautiful. I absolutely love this color combination. And again, remember, you can do different colors for the different flowers if you want. Next, we're going to do the sentiments for this card. And in order to add a little bit of color to the sentiment 
panels or the sentiment strips, I'm going to add a little bit of that same pink ink blending. So again, this is color taffy onto a sheet of better press cardstock. So I'm just using a larger blending brush from my stash. This is the largest blending brush available in the Spellbinder shop. And I'm adding a light color, a light layer of pink color onto this background. Here I have my better press system once again, and the sentiments are already positioned on my better press system. I've attached the paper, I've inked up the plate, and I'm going to just send this through my Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine to apply pressure and transfer these sentiments onto my beautiful light pink ink blended background. If you want, you can of course press the sentiments on colored cardstock, but I wanted to use only the products that are included in this gift set and show you what you can do using them. These come with the coordinating dies and of course I used mine to cut them out. And now we have these cute little ink blended sentiment strips for our cards. I'm going to use three different sentiments for this card. I love to layer different messages. So I'm going to go with the celebratory messages here. Make a wish, happy birthday, and it's your day. Now, before we assemble our project, I wanted to trim my ink blended panel down slightly. So I'm using a rectangle die from my stash. And in order to protect the paper from the cut marks from my cutting plate, I'm placing a sheet of thin paper on top. Here, I'm just using basically the label from a product that I have in my stash. And then I'm adding the top cutting plate on top. So the label, that extra sheet of paper, is going to take all the beading and my better press cardstock is not going to have any marks on it. With this done, I've used thin foam adhesive squares and I'm now adding this panel onto an A2 side folding card base created from the Spellbinders Fog cardstock. So I have a beautiful light gray card base, a beautiful ink blended background with a pink and teal and a little bit of light gray. Next, I'm going to add the sentiments in the center of my panel and I want to have a slightly wonky design. So I'm placing them all a bit at an angle. And again, I'm using foam adhesive squares here. These are the regular thickness and just going to adhere these strips one by one to create the sentiment for my card. With that done, I used clear drops from Spellbinders and I added a bunch onto my background just to add a little bit of additional interest. So here's a look at the card I have for you today created with the Spellbinders basic better press gift set. I'm going to create a simple foiled card and I will walk you through the process. So here I have my Glimmer Hot Foil system. It is already nice and hot, and I'm going to foil the Anemone Blooms Better Press Blade in one of the foil colors that comes in the kit. I'm using my Spellbinders scissors to cut a piece of foil large enough to cover my Glimmer plate, and then I am placing a sheet of Specialty Glimmer cardstock on top and adding the two plates, the two shims that are included with the Glimmer Hot Foil system. I press the timer button and now I just need to wait for about a minute for my Glimmer Hot Foil plate to get hot and ready to transfer the beautiful foil onto my paper. I'm going to use the Glimmer Hot Foil system together with the Platinum 6 and the Platinum 6 is going to apply the pressure. The Glimmer is providing the heat and then the Platinum 6 is providing the pressure. So it takes about one minute for that light to blink, to flash, and for the plate to get good and hot. Now that the light has turned solid green, I can take the platform out of the docking station and slowly send it through my Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine to apply pressure and transfer the beautiful design onto the paper. Let's remove the foil and take a look and oh my goodness, see how beautiful this is. Foiling always gives such beautiful and unique results. Next, I'm going to do some ink blending. With this glimmer plate, you can leave it as is, or you can add color to it using your favorite coloring medium. I'm going to add ink blending using Better Press inks and Spellbinders blending brushes. I have three colors of ink, taffy, 
Tuscan in Tiger. And I'm going to use the small blending brushes in different sizes. So these particular blending brushes come in a pack of three and there is a small, a medium and a large brush in each pack, giving you options and allowing you to add ink blending to even the smallest areas. So I'm first blending with the taffy ink. I actually had some leftover ink on my brush. I tried to clean most of that onto a piece of scrap paper. And now I switch to a smaller blending brush and I'm picking that same ink up again with a smaller blending brush and applying it to the tips of the petals. So I want to fade the hot pink into white. The base of the petals is going to be hot pink and then the tips of the petals is going to be white. This is a very easy process. I'm not doing any masking. I'm just using the small blending brushes to apply the ink onto the paper. If you want to be very particular, if you want to be very specific and, uh, you know, very careful as to how you apply the ink, you can also create a mask for this image. So foil this same image once again, cut it out, create masks for the individual petals or for the flowers and use those masks to apply the ink. I didn't want to do this. I wanted to do a simple ink blending and I wanted to show you how you can quickly add color to this beautiful image. I'm going to speed up my ink blending just a bit because we don't want to watch me ink blend for 10 minutes. And with the taffy ink blending done, I'm going to move on to my next flower and my next color. I then came back with a larger blending brush and blended all of that together. That just helped soften the edges of my ink blending and spread the color a bit further. Next, I have a black better press ink and I'm using a very small blending brush and I'm applying that black just to the center of my flowers. So these are anemones and anemones usually have a black center. That's why I'm using the black ink and that tiny blending brush to apply black just to the center of my flower. I'm also using my finger a little bit and then even a dry baby wipe uh, to sort of wipe some of that ink away. And next it's time to ink blend our second flower. And here I'm starting with a medium sized blending brush from Spellbinders. I already have some yellow ink on the blending brush. So I'm laying down the background color here. This is that same Tuscan color. And with that done, I'm switching to the smaller blending brushes and applying the ink onto the petals, making sure that I have saturated tips or saturated bases of the petals and then the tips remain white. So again, I have a lot of color at the base of the petals and I am fading that color into white. It's one of my favorite ways to do ink blending. Once again, I'm going back to the larger blending brush and softening all of that blending. Again, using Better Press black ink and a small blending brush and ink blending the center to create the beautiful anemone. For my final flower, I'm using the Tiger ink and once again, a different blending brush so that I'm not contaminating the colors and I'm adding just a little bit of blending again at the base of that beautiful bud. I'm not going to use any other colors because we have the leaves here and the leaves are all solid. So there's no need to add any other color to this ink blending. I love the way this looks. So this glimmer plate comes with a coordinating die and here I have my Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine. I'm positioning the die on my image and using the best of a craft tape to tape it in place and send it through my die cutting machine to cut it out. And look at this beautiful floral cluster. Love it. Okay, let's go ahead and start working on a sentiment for our card. So here I have another panel of the specialty Better Press cardstock, and I'm going to add some color to this using once again Better Press inks. So first, I wasn't sure which color I wanted to have as a background, and I decided I'm going to use the same colors that I used for ink blending my flowers. So I'm first ink blending a background with Tiger ink, and I'm using the largest Spellbinders blending brush. This one is super large and fluffy and it makes it very easy to add color to any background. So here I have that beautiful tiger color and I'm also going to ink blend one more panel using the taffy ink. 
just because I'm not quite sure if I want to have that yellow orange or if I want to have a pink background. I end up using the pink one because it makes more sense for this card, but I definitely save the other background in my stash to use for other projects. So here I'm just using a heavy hand to apply a lot of pink to my background. With that done, we are going to go back to our Glimmer Hot Foil system and start foiling. So here I have the sentiments. These are included in the Glimmer gift set. And once again, I'm going to cut a piece of foil. This is the same foil color as I used before. And I'm going to foil these sentiments on the pink background. I'm doing the same steps as I did before to foil this image on the paper. If you are new to the Glimmer Hot Foil system, I encourage you to check out a Glimmer Bootcamp on the Spellbinders YouTube channel. This will teach you the tips and tricks of hot foiling and will help you become a hot foiling pro. So my sentiment panel is ready and I have quite a bit of over foiling there. I wanted to share a little trick with you to help remove the access foil. So whenever I have overfoiling, there are several ways you can uh, use to remove the foil. My favorite method is to use the best of a craft tape and just gently tape it over the foiled image, maybe rub a little bit with my finger and then lift the tape up, removing the extra foil. You need to be careful and gentle when you do this because otherwise you might remove the actual foil that you actually need on your paper. But if you are careful, you will be able to remove the overfoiling very easily from your paper. Other ways, other methods are to use a sanding eraser and also you can use a dry brush and just brush the excess foil away. And sometimes you might even use a craft knife to scrape the foil away. When I'm using this particular paper, I prefer to use tape because that, I think, gives me the best results when it comes to removing excess foil. So here you can see all of that excess foil on my tape. And here's a look at our foiled sentiment panel. And then you can also tell that my foiled image now looks a lot better and a lot cleaner. Here's a little close up. There is a coordinating die available to help you cut all of these sentiments out. And that's the beauty of this Glimmer Sentiment set. You can foil a bunch of sentiments at once and also cut a bunch of sentiments at once. You can save the sentiments you don't need and don't use for a later project. And this way you will have sentiments ready the next time you are making a card. I find this to be very convenient. Remove the coordinating die and just pick the sentiments that I want. I really like the one that says sending love. So this is the sentiment I'm going to use for my card. I love this wonky banner shape. And I'm just going to trim the little loose hairs from the edge of the banner. This is the nature of the paper that I'm using. This particular paper will give these, you know, loose hairs and you can get rid of them using scissors or even a nail file. With all the parts and pieces ready, it's time to assemble our card. Here, I also die cut a word friend. I use the Spellbinders treasured cardstock for the top layer of the friend die cut. The friend die is included with the anemone glimmer plate. So you have a glimmer plate and a die. So I use the gold assorted pack to die cut the word friend. And I also die cut the word friend two more times from scrap white cardstock. I'm going to use barely art glue and glue these together to give a little bit of stability, a little bit of dimension to this piece. This die also cuts a shadow layer for the word friend. And this is very helpful because the shadow layer helps this little dainty word stand out from the background. And for that, I used regular white cardstock. And again, I cut it from white cardstock twice because I want this to be a little bit sturdier. So going to use barely art glue and again, glue these together and then add the friend, the gold friend, on top of the white shadow friend. So the sentiment for my card is going to say, friend sending love. 
I have a gray panel for my card. This is the Spellbinders Fog. And I'm going to adhere this panel onto a few panels of scrap cardstock. I like to do this again to make the panel a little sturdier and also if I want to pop it up. So I'm using thin foam adhesive squares here. I'm adding quite a lot of squares to the back of this panel. And I'm going to use those to pop the panel up on the background. So this is an A2 card base made from white cardstock. I'm adding a gray panel on top. And next I'm going to add a little bit of splatter. I have a lot of shine and shimmer on my panel, but I figured I wanted to add a little bit of the gold splatter to this background to add some movement to my card. So here I have the Yasutomo watercolor. You can find this in the Spellbinder shop. It is absolutely fabulous product to add little splatters to your projects. I added a little bit of water using the Spellbinders water mister. And now I'm using Bastara craft tape in the narrow width and taping the edges of my white panel. I should have just added the splatter onto a gray panel before adding it onto a card base, but I didn't think about that at the time. So that's why I use the Bastara craft tape to mask the edges. I'm also using a water brush and I'm picking up the splatter using the water brush. Next, tapping on the water brush with my finger and applying that splatter onto the background. This is my favorite way to add splatter onto my projects by using a water brush. Now let's go ahead and assemble everything. So here I have my anemone die cut. I'm also adding it to another panel a white cardstock panel just to make this die cut sturdier. I'm going to set it aside and let the glue dry and then use foam adhesive squares from the back. These are the regular thickness. So I used thin foam adhesive squares before and now I'm using regular thickness foam adhesive squares to pop this beautiful image on my background. I always like to use foam adhesive for my projects because I like to have a lot of dimension. I feel like dimension helps bring images to life and they just look a lot better in the end. So let's place this in the center of my panel like so. And next we can add the friend die. I'm adding this using foam adhesive squares also again to have this popped up on my card. And with a friend die get added, I'm also adding the Sending Love banner. The Sending Love banner also has foam adhesive on the back. And again, this is popped up. Everything has a little bit of dimension on my project. And I just love the way this turned out. So once again, this card was created using the Spellbinders Glimmering gift set available in the Spellbinders shop. So here's a look at the finished card. I love the way this turned out. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. Uh, if you're looking for the links, you can find them in the video description below. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you guys, and I will see you again soon.